Hey guys, what's up everyone? Welcome back to a new video. This is the first video of 2021 and this is also one of the first web development tutorials you're going to see on this channel. Now, as many of you already know, I'm studying web development next to doing all the cybersecurity and bug bounty stuff, mainly because I want to build things, but also I want to better understand how the web applications that are actually security test work and how they are built. And the best way to learn that is to build something like that yourself, I guess. Now, I fully understand that some of you might not be interested in uh, those kind of videos. Some of them will be specifically tailored to the cybersecurity community. We will build stuff from ground up so that you can better understand how apps are built. And I will do videos specifically for cybersecurity guys or bug bounty people. And uh, I will do something around that. But uh, those kind of tutorials that are pure web development tutorials, like how to design stuff, how to build stuff. Uh, this is actually one video that is uh, building something. That's probably not going to be very interesting if you are one of the cybersecurity people or cybersecurity subscribers on my channel. So you can just skip ahead. You read it anyway in uh, the title if it's related to cybersecurity or not. And you can just uh, make that up for yourself if you want to watch it, if it's interesting for you or not. I think that might be the best approach to take on this channel for the future. So videos will be clearly titled if they are relevant for cybersecurity or hackers or bug bounty guys, or if they are entirely made up for uh, web development and coding people, basically. Uh, we tried it, we see how it goes, and if you have any comments to that, just leave them below and I'll be happy to get any feedback on that topic. Now with all that out of the way, let's get into the actual tutorial. Today uh, I want to show you how to create reusable components with React uh, using styled components. Now I have just recently started using styled components myself and I immediately saw how powerful they are if you use them right. Now, what that means is you can basically go ahead and create something like a button, a nav bar or a footer, whatever, and you could go ahead and save it for later reuse in another project for a client or for a personal project by simply having just one single JSX file that includes the whole component. And this is made possible because uh, you can use styled components to basically create CSS within uh, the JavaScript file. So you don't need a separate CSS file when you, use, when you are using styled components. And the beauty of that is you could just go ahead and create a button or whatever you want, and then go ahead and maybe even, you can just copy the code and paste it somewhere where you can uh, reuse it, or you can just go ahead and create your very own uh, React component, uh, GitHub repository, and you could just go ahead and uh, copy this one single JSX file into a subfolder in your components library that's called buttons or whatever, and you call it button one JSX, and then you can just literally copy and paste this uh, whole component and it's reusable in another application. But that makes more sense when I show it to you over on the computer, so let's do just that. Okay, so for this tutorial, there is an actual written tutorial also existing on COSEC.com. I will link that in the upper right corner, one of those. <laughs> and uh, I will follow through on this article that I have written just yesterday. So I will look to my right screen a couple of times and uh, make sure that I use the exact same syntax I also have used in the written article. So you can go ahead and pull that up anytime you want in case you want to copy some code that makes everything a little bit easier for us. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, create our first a React app or we just basically create a default React app and how I do that is simply you're probably familiar with that if you look up a tutorial like this you probably know how to use React uh, nevertheless I'm just going to do a uh, new tutor um, folder <laughs> called reusable button component and I'm reading that from my own tutorial on COSEC and then I cd into that and then I do npx create react app uh, dot inside of this uh, folder that creates the react app right in uh, this folder. Uh, that will take a couple of seconds to finish and uh, we'll wait. Maybe it's already finished. Oh, it will take a couple of seconds. So we'll be right back once that is done. Okay, the react uh, create react app has just finished. I'll make this a little bit bigger for you guys. I'm gonna clean up the screen for us. And next thing we're going to do, we install styled components. So we do npm install and it's already showing up here. Styled minus components and I do minus minus save to also save it inside of the package JSON file. So every time I 
uh, want to pull this repository again, it's uh, saved in the package.json file and I can uh, reinstall it by just simply typing npm install. All right, that takes another couple of seconds and we'll be right back once that's done. And also just to have mentioned it, this is my first actual coding tutorial uh, where I do web development things. So bear with me if I do any mistakes, gladly point them out in the comments below. Okay, that is ready. There are zero vulnerabilities found. That's good in case there are some showing up. You can type npm audit fix to fix them. And uh, that's all we need to do right here. Now, if you're wondering, I'm using Windows Terminal, by the way, with a WSL2 subsystem for a Windows subsystem for Linux. I forgot to mention that in the beginning, but that shouldn't be a big problem. Uh, we type then code and dot to open Visual Studio, Studio code uh, off of this uh, directory here. And then I'll pull that over here. Okay, now we can go ahead and open the SRC folder and we see that this is indeed a very new vanilla uh, React app and we can start that app by running npm start. Okay, it opened up. Now we need to move some windows to the sides here, I guess. And we take this one, put it here and we create a little bit more space for us. That is fine. And then I will also make uh, the VS Code itself a little bit bigger and I'm gonna close this down for the moment. Okay, I will go ahead and uh, delete a bunch of stuff here between the header so we can get rid of this code to make it a little bit uh, better to see. Uh, we can get rid of all of that, I guess, and we just leave the, the uh, React logo spinning there. We're gonna save it and it should automatically reload. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we create a new folder inside of SRC and we call it components, default stuff. In there, I create another new folder called buttons. And in the buttons folder, I create a new file and I'll call this, um, let me quickly check. I think I called it test button in the other tutorial, in the written tutorial, test button.jsx. Okay, now I use a Emmet aberration or I think it's Emmet at least. I type RAFC to uh, create a simple React component here. It does import React from React automatically and it creates uh, the actual function for the component that we are going to use. Uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to import styled for the styled components from styled minus components. I hope you can read that well. I can make it even bigger. Let's do it like this so the people who are watching this on mobile can also see that. Um, and then we have our simple button component. Now, of course, we need to add some style to that. Now, if you have never used style components before, that's actually fairly easy. You create a new variable that's called something like button because that's what it is. It's a button, but you can name this whatever you want. Obviously, it's a component. Maybe it's even better to name it something like uh, maybe green button or something like this. But for the sake of this tutorial, we keep it simple. We name it button. And uh, then you say styled dot and a button. That's what it is. Then you need those uh, quotation marks that point to the left. I really don't know the English name for that. I don't even know the German name for that. But those are the ones you usually use for template literals or template strings in uh, JavaScript. Okay, so we haven't done anything with our test button component down here yet, and we did not do any styling. So I will just copy and paste some style from uh, the written tutorial that I have open on my right side, and I'll just paste that right in here. And uh, how style components work, everything you put in between of those uh, quotation marks uh, is basically uh, CSS. That's all there is to it. So all valid CSS will work in here. And I just need to space that out a little bit. There we go. That looks fine. Okay, what we do next is we need to rename this diff here to this, uh, the name of this variable. So in this case, it's a button. We can go ahead and delete this whole diff. And then we're going to do button and it automatically auto completes and uh, we have created our test button function or component. So now that this is basically finished, we go back to our app.js and we need to import this button component here. So we do import uh, test button from 
dot forward slash components forward slash buttons forward slash test button JSX. Then we save and uh, it should be imported, but we just didn't use it. Okay, our app is still working, that's great. And now we're, if we want to use our button, uh, we can just go ahead and do a button and actually not button, but obviously test button. That was wrong, so I redo that completely. Test button, that's the name of our imported button. And if we did all correct, the button should show up down here in a second and it does show up. Now, what do we want to usually do with buttons? We want to add some text in between. And if we try to add some text and we save it, then you can see that actually nothing is happening. And this is because we have missed to put a children property or children prop in uh, our button component. Uh, this is required for naming buttons that you have imported or for anything really that you import and you want to add some text to it within your uh, application, you need to give it a children prop in React. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So we leave this text here and we go back to our test uh, button.jsx and how we do that is we simply uh, give our function an argument called, uh, I think children, yeah, children should be what it is, uh, children. And then uh, we need to basically add this as a placeholder between our two buttons in our button component, again, as uh, in angle brackets, and we do children and if we did that correctly we should see actually text popping up right here if react is not crapping out on us and there is the text that we have entered and now we can obviously go ahead and uh, change this to whatever text we want and this will now work now this is important to know if you work with style components or any components in react really that if you want to change the text after importing it or you want to change a property after importing it you need to actually give it a prop here inside of the uh, function argument. Um, now you might ask yourself, uh, this is good, but uh, how can I, maybe can I restyle this button now after importing it? And the answer to that is, yes, you can. And that's actually pretty easy. Uh, the thing that we need to do for that is also give it another property here called, um, now I need to really look at my, at my own tutorial because I always forget this. And it's actually simply, class name and you probably know class name if you work with react that's the equivalent of class equals in uh, normal javascript if you want to give something a class or in, um, or actually normal uh, html and this is class name in react so we need to add the class name prop in the function argument and then we also need to go ahead and add another class name next to the button that's what you would do in the actual HTML as well. But here, instead of uh, doing something like a class name, we just add the class name prop right in here. And what this allows us to do is pretty cool. We can now go back to our app.js and we can go here. If it's not bugging on me. Okay, there we go. And now we can go ahead and uh, first need to import style components as well because we utilize uh, style components here again style components there we go import style from style components and then we create another uh, basically another style component variable that we call different so we don't call this test button we call it a new button or how did I call it in our written tutorial ah okay I call it modified test button so let's stick with that modified test button equals styled and now in the styled you don't put styled.button again like we did previously but you do styled and then you do uh, braces here and we want to put our test button in there and then we do those quotation marks again and what this does is it basically tells our new styled component right here that we import everything from the test button, but we can also go ahead and modify its style. So this component inherits everything that is coming back from test button. And I can show you that in a second. We just go ahead and change test button here to modified test button. And we should see our button again as it is. Let's see if the app is still loading. It is not. Something is wrong. Let's see. Okay, our app crashed with exit status one. 
I don't know why that happened. Probably too many changes. Um, but uh, it should work now again. And uh, you can see that we see our uh, button once again. So we change the name and it, you can see that it inherits everything that is there. Now you can go ahead and just simply do uh, background color, which is now obviously green, and you can change that to red. And that gets overwritten. Should get overwritten. There we go. So you can override uh, existing styles without the need of using something like important that you would do in CSS. Uh, you don't need that uh, with style components because it knows that you want to change the background color and to override it. It wouldn't make sense to use something like important here. But of course what you can also do, let's get rid of this, let's comment this one out. And what we could do is we could do font weight, we can add something completely new, we could put it to bold and we could put font size to two rams. And so we can go ahead and use our components and just give them minor style adjustments if you want to make the button smaller for media queries or something like this. So this is pretty interesting stuff. I really like this. But now let's get to the really to the best thing of it. And it's actually the title of the video, how to create reusable components with a React. And if you look at this component now, this is basically the whole component. You have your CSS here, you have a component here with the props and everything. So you can just go ahead and either copy this whole file uh, and paste it in some of your own repositories. Like I said, you can create a components, React components rep repository or something like this. And you can literally just copy and paste this and reuse it wherever you want to use it again. So this is really nice because sometimes I do create my own nav bars and stuff like this. And when I create something that I really like, I always try to make a style component from it, which means that I, uh, if I use a, a separate CSS file for a navbar or whatever, I try to port that over to style components so I'll be able to reuse it as a single component as it is. So I hope this was helpful to you guys. If it was, let me know in the comments of this video. Also, let me know any mistakes I made while creating this tutorial. As I said, once again, it's my first coding tutorial. I hope I did well. And I have to say it's really hard, uh, as some of the other guys who make coding tutorials say, to write code and talk at the same time. It's not easy. Uh, but I hope I got my point across and uh, I hope you understand why I like style components that much. And I really understand the use of it and how awesome it is to create simple, small, compact components that are completely reusable. With all that being said, guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, subscribe to this channel. Also, if you're coming from a web development background, Make sure to subscribe because there will be more web development tutorials coming in the near future. I'm a self-taught web developer and I try to uh, do my tutorials in a way that everybody is able to understand it. I do it the same way I do my hacking content or my cybersecurity content, which is basically complicated stuff or complicated things made easy. Okay, guys, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.